What's up? My name is Christian Adam. Christian Adam G. I think that's what y'all call me. Christian Adam Gilbert. That's my full name. Some girls they call me Big Mucka Daddy. They call me. They call me. They call me Big Mucka because I got the long penis. Okay, I, okay. Let me shut up. You know what you're saying? Um, disclaimer. I can't draw. You know what you're saying? But hey, it's the thought that comes, right? Anyways, right? I was born on this little island called Nassau, Bahamas. New Providence to be exact. Born and raised 19 years of my life. I don't know where it is on the map, though. A nigga dumb. I think it's on the right side somewhere. We don't win no damn Olympics. We don't have no no major basketball team. We don't have no major um, baseball team. But hey, I'll always rep my damn island, bro. You know what you're saying? You gotta rep where you come from. And I'll always rep that place. You know what I mean? Anyways, right, to start the story off, right, in junior high school, I went to H.O. Nash, and I saying, where I was always getting teased, bro, and I saying, I just had some type of target on me. They just loved to tease me for some reason, and bro, I was getting teased every day, bro, and I saying, it, it just was a normal thing for me. The only thing that really made me happy back then is playing games, and Black Ops 1, like, y'all know Black Ops 1, that was my favorite game back then. Like, that's the only thing I was really good at, but my mother, she didn't really agree. If anybody know me, I'm a shy person. I was just shy. I was always shy. You know what I'm saying? I missed out on so much opportunities in my life for just being shy. I took so long to get a first kiss. I took long to get my first girlfriend. You know what I'm saying? Everything happened late for me. All I wanted to do was fit in. Talking to girls, way out of the question. You know what I'm saying? Being in large groups, that's a hell no. Being the center of attention, that's an extra hell no. I just could not do those stuff back then. So all that resulted in me getting teased at school, bro. You know how some people get teased in school for having braces? Um, nigga, you black. Um, your breath stink. Nigga, I was just getting teased for being ugly. So what I did, I searched for something and life that made me happy so back then i watched a lot of high school musical and i see how troy bolton he was popular i was like hold on i won't be popular too i say so i need to find something i'm good at you know he's saying all ugly niggas if you ugly you need to be good at a sport my personality was in there because i was shy so i say hey christian your personality suck your face ain't look like the good kind so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna try look for a sport that, that's something i'm good at so I tried, tried, I ended up quitting that. And I was actually good at that, bro. I told y'all many times, I was good at that, but hey, I was still getting teased. And I said, Christian, you could run fast, right? But you still ugly. So after that, I tried basketball, but y'all know them haters, they still hate, you know what I'm saying? So I quit that after a while. You got it just too right, but you still ugly. Anyways, right? So junior high school went by, high school reached now, I went to CV Bethel High School. I finally find something that made me fit in, you know what I'm saying? I, I told jokes, and I was always, I was, I was always good at that. See, that was the only thing making me cool, I should say. Sometimes, the only reason I came to school was to make jokes. I'ma say this and I'ma say that. I remember sometimes writing down jokes. Okay, I never did that. I just wanted to see. I wanted, I wanted y'all to think I was dedicated. My jokes finally made me fit in, I guess. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't working out for me. I wanted girls. I wanted to have sex. I wanted to do stuff other niggas was doing. Like people, they came to school talking about, I had this girl look to the house yesterday and she opened her leg and I got to saw like the, the, the bush and I laugh and I run outside. They had stories. I never had stories back then. So I, I wanted the same thing they had. Anyways, right, born and raised in the Bahamas. Me, my sister, my brother, my mother, and my dad. We was one big happy family at one point. That was a short point too. My mother and father got in a lot of fights though, so they got a divorce and my dad decided to leave one day. He said, hey, before anything happened, I'ma leave. He never came back. And anyways, right, about my dad, he's a mechanic. He been fixing cars from ever since he was a little boy. And my mother, she worked at Subway, straight out of high school, she been working there since. And she still worked there to this day. My mother had to quickly become the mother and father of the host, bro. She gave us lunch money, she got us food, she brought us to church, and I saying she dealt with us when it comes to our school grades and stuff. Hey, my mother, she's just always there for us. My dad, he's in Atlanta talking to girls, and saying that's what he was doing. He was he was basically with girls wise. My mother was taking care of us alone. He didn't really care too much about us until about five years later when we got our first call from him. It's been five years since we heard from him. Um, Christian, um, what's up with you? Who is this? Is this this my this your father, nigga? I talked to your mother and I bought y'all a ticket. Y'all put to come this summer, you and your sister. So we did just that. You know what I'm saying? That summer, we went to Atlanta, Georgia. We all want to know the weirdest part of our trip. The first time we saw him in over five years. Like this is the first time we see him with gray hair. The first time he like he looked older than the last time we saw him. I remember him running to us for a hug, like some type of dime, the notebook. It just felt weird, bro. It didn't feel right. And I said I gave him one of them church hugs. For most people that don't know him, bro, he ain't really the type to really stick to one girl. Like you know, some people that just cannot be in relationships. That's him. On the other side, my mom. Only thing about her is that she loved to yell, but hey, she never left us. So now my sister, she plays instruments. So my brother, he does like comedy and music. Are you saying he? I think he raps or make me. I don't know what the hell he do, but he do something like that. Now when it comes to me, I never really know like what was my purpose. Like what was my purpose in life? Why did God put me on this earth? Everything I did, I quit. I quit track. Quit basketball, but y'all want to know what made me realize what I wanted to do in life? Okay, let me tell y'all a story. All right, a few days after graduation is when I had my first girlfriend ever. I remember she sent me this long paragraph. It was this long paragraph, how she had a crush on me, and how she liked me, and I remind you, I never know who this girl was. I just knew that she went to my school. The only thing I really remember about her is that she loved basketball, and she loved the color pink. Me, I was just shy. Four months into our relationship is when we had our first kiss. I was just holding it off for so long. She did all the work, you know what I'm saying? She, she literally pulled me in, kissed me. 
my eyes were still open and everything. After I walked away from that kiss, I really felt like a man. Like, no one could have talked to me the wrong way. I felt like I was growing a bird and all. I feel like a mustache was coming on. I really felt like a man after that. Down the line, you know, every relationship, we have our hard days. She started talking to this next nigga. That made me sad. This is my first girlfriend, so of course it hurt me. And I always wondered why. Like, why was she doing this? I remember us still being together and they spent months and days together. It was always on the court just playing basketball. And I would just watch them from a distance. So what y'all don't know, our tradition for us is that every day after school, no matter how much arguments we get into, no matter how mad we is at each other, we always walk each other home after school. Always. That's just our tradition. No matter what we going through. One day, she never showed up. She wasn't where she's supposed to be. So what I did, I went in the back of the school, I looked on the court, and guess what I saw? I saw her and that nigga hugging. I was too shy, I didn't throw my hand to them. I just ran home. <laughs> they said, a nigga, I, 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 did, I did the Usain Bolt home. I ran home. My friend was like, hey, Christian, where you going, bro? I said, I going home, bro. I talk to y'all later. I was on a Friday. On that sad day is when I called her. Where you was yesterday? Like, I was really waiting on you yesterday. Where are you? I was trying to trick her and see if she would tell me. She was like, oh, I was waiting on you. Um, I went home because I didn't see you. I said, oh, this girl could damn lie. She lying to me. She, that was a damn lie, bro. So I told her, just like this, hey, bring that ball again. Because she was the one bringing that ball to school for her and that nigga to play. So I was like, hey, bring that ball one more time. It over. And what she did on Monday, she brought the ball. And I was single. A couple days later, her and that nigga, they got together, like in a relationship. So y'all niggas know what that means. They been doing something when we was together. I felt maybe it was something I did wrong. Like saying, me and her, our longest relationship was like 11 months. And I saw us like a date. And I said, we did it like four. No, no, no. We did it like five times. A few days later, my dad called. Hey, Christian, come back. I, I want to see y'all again. But just you. Because my sister, she at school. I was out of school. And I said, so back on the plane heading to Georgia again. This time, he was living in a hotel. I was like, oh, hell no. But he didn't tell me until we pulled up to the hotel. I remember pulling up to this hotel. I was like, hold on, wait. So what, were you here for the weekend or something? No. That's just where we live. And it wasn't just any hotel. You could hear people having sex next door. You know what I mean? People knocking on your door, asking you for condoms. And the weird thing about it is that I gave it to them. I said, hey, I was giving them condoms. People asked me if you got any drugs. Hey, you want to smoke? Some crackheads asking me, hey, Christian, you trying to have sex? It was a lot, bro. And tell us one day I met this girl at the hotel. And I said, she was a little plum and she had a butter nut. Like, she, she, had, she, had she had that chunky. She was, it was fat. It was fat back there. And I said, she had these, like, these long braids in. The best part about it is that she wasn't the one to come up and talk to me. I walk up and talk to her for once in my life. I felt so proud of myself, bro. A nigga wasn't shy. No matter what she said to me, even if she walked away and said, be like, you ugly, at least I walk up to her and talk to her. So I was proud and what I did. This is the first girl I ever took on a date. If anybody know, Bahamians do not go on dates. I took that girl at Waffle House. She had two cousins. They were so fine. She had two little brothers. They love asking me for money. They never once asked me for money in front of her though. Hey Christian, you got a spare dollar? And I gave it to them. One day though, we were chilling. She asked me, Christian, are you a virgin? I said, and I said, yeah. I guess my hand didn't count. Before her though, I met someone else on Whisper, a Whisper app. I never thought I'd actually meet them in person though, because you know, a lot of times when you talk to a girl online, you don't never meet them in person. Fine little white girl, like saying she had a big butt too, like she had a butt, like she, she, yeah, she, she packed him when it comes to that area. Her parents rich, she's sexual and she love black niggas. She don't mess with white boys. She tell me that plain and simple. On the other hand, we got the black girl that I was talking to at the same time. Hey, she, she, she ain't really into condoms, like condoms ain't really a thing. So one day, the white girl called me over to her house, hey, her parents ain't home, hey, you wanna come over? I did just that. This is the first time meeting each other in person. So by telling y'all all of this right now, I'm telling y'all how I break out of the shyness, bro. Right now, I'm doing something I never thought I'd actually be doing. I lost my virginity that day. A few days later, the black girl hit me up. Hey, Christian, you still a virgin? I guess she liked the fact that I was a virgin and maybe she could have been my first time and that we could have something special. I was like, um, you know what I mean? Um, well, if you really look at it, um, yeah, and I said, I, I, I could not tell her no, we had sex that same day. And she wasn't like any normal girl, nigga. She won that three times a day, bro. God damn. She was a freak, bro. You know what I'm saying? One day, I just decided to cut her off. You know what I'm saying? Why? Why I did that? I don't want no damn babies. I feel like in the future, I'm going to have a baby with her. That's how I felt. Because this girl, she hate condoms, bro. So, what I did, I went back home. Four months later, I fly right back to Georgia. And that's why I met this next girl. Nah, this girl, she was different. She was light-skinned. She was smart. You know what I'm saying? She ain't really on them other girls' level. You know what I'm saying? This is the type of girl you marry. Nigga, she ain't got a hint to get her up. And I love girls like that. When you ain't got not a hint to get her in you, you my type. She ain't really into ghetto niggas herself. Like, I feel as if if I made noodles in the microwave, bro, she would break up with me. You know what I'm saying? It's that serious. Most importantly, her mother loved me, bro. I had crushes in my lifetime, bro, but damn. This girl? Man, I was having butterflies just talking to her. Let me tell y'all something about me. Every time I'm really interested in a girl, bro, when I'm texting them, I read over my paragraphs, trying to make sure there's no spelling errors, and I saying I make sure all the emojis in the right spot, and I saying I even had a friend back home in the Bahamas who I consulted in. I know y'all may think I'm over-exaggerating when I'm saying this, bro, but damn. Literally, every time I text her, 
she texts me back a month later. And nigga, I'm really mean 31 days every time. One day I was listening to the song, right? And it went something like this. You will never know unless you ask and maybe she'll be the one waiting on you. I was like, bro, Christian, maybe she is the one maybe thinking, why won't he just ask me out? I thought that to myself. Christian, let's stop being shy. Just ask. And I'm saying the worst thing she could do is probably block you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's the worst thing that could happen. So that day, I decided to ask her. Unlike usual, she texts back hella quick this time. I answer went something like this. And I'm saying, sure, but I'm kind of talking to somebody, but we can still go out. And I'm saying something like that. That's when I answer back, oh, she was legit mad when I said that. What's that supposed to mean? Y'all niggas get me right. You know what I'm saying? Who wants to spend money on a girl that have a nigga? It's just something niggas don't do. A at least I won't do it. Because at the end of the day, who you running back to? You running back to your boyfriend. You ain't running back to me. So that's that's what I was thinking. After that text right there, that was the last time we talked, bro. Now, this last girl is a girl that worked at Starbucks, bro. You see, my dad goes to Starbucks every morning to get coffee. And I mean every morning. He doesn't miss a day. This one morning, my dad went in for coffee. And there he met this girl, bro. And I said, hey, this girl, hey, she got she had a fade, nigga. Her, her hairline was shorter than mine. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Her fade was her fade was fresher than mine. So I swear to God, hey, she got short hair. My dad is the type of person, bro. He loved to hook me up with people. Like anybody he see, hey, I have a son. I think you'll be good for him. So he saw this girl that morning and he did what he do. She was like, hey, let me let me see a picture. And my dad showed her one of the ugliest pictures of me. Bro, in that picture, I look like how I look today, right? But Ugly up. Now you saying I know some of y'all like down nah, 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 no, it's unbelievable. Now you saying believe it, true story. I don't know why, but for some reason she was impressed. She was actually impressed. She was like, okay, um, give him my Facebook when you see him. Facebook nigga. Who the hell goes on Facebook? I remember hitting her up that same night. She was like, hey, your dad told me you're a shy, and she always was attracted to shy guys. She always told me that. We was talking for about a month until one day she just fall off the face of the earth, bro. What every shy nigga do, he goes on YouTube and he searches up how to talk to a girl. I like I <laughs> I know y'all may be laughing at me, but I really searched that up back then. It was a guy and trip advice I think. He used to give me advice on how to text a girl, how to talk to a girl, what to do when you see a girl. Hey, I was taking notes back then. What I don't usually do is text girls twice after they don't answer me back the first time. You know what I'm saying? But trip Trip advice was telling me, hey, text a girl four times before stopping. He literally said that. I'm never really good at this stuff. It's something I'm doing wrong, of course. Ain't nothing been working out for me, so maybe I've I'm, I'm been doing it wrong all these years. I decided to text her back for the second time. No reply. Three days go by. I text her back again. Is everything okay? Like, is everything good with you? Again, no reply. I say, hell no. I ain't going to no damn four days. Trip advice, he, hey, I, he tripping. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, I ain't texting her back no damn four times now. Nah. About two weeks later, when my dad went to Starbucks that morning, I went with him. Nigga, this day, you ever had a day like you just was more handsome? than usual i had a good hairline my face wasn't bumpy that day you know what i saying my hair was curly i remember walking inside that starbucks and everybody was like oh wow oh wow oh wow so i walked up to the corner with my dad my dad was ordering his normal coffee that day she started talking to me this is the first time we ever saw each other face to face she started offering me free drinks as we was leaving i remember her saying hey christian hey when you get home call me i remember saying that nah, day as soon as i got in that damn guy delete that damn number bro i can like she wasn't ignoring me all those damn days me and my dad we just was moving hotel a hotel a hotel you know what you saying not for any valid reasons you know my daddy just had like a problem bro we just love to complain a lot it'll be some random day right where you wake up and be like hey christian pack up all this stuff and i say let's go it was always for some petty reason so now i know y'all wondering why did i tell y'all little stories about those girls so hey it's christian christian adam don't adjust your whatever device your hand is on it's me live and in stereo no return engagements no on call and this time absolutely no request so settle in i'm about to tell you the story of my life more specifically why my life ended and if you're listening to this tape you're one of the reasons why <laughs> hey <laughs> So y'all probably wondering why I told those stories about those girls. Besides having the passion to make people laugh, those girls was the reason I did YouTube. Or at least the reason I started when I did. You see, you got two choices on how you want to look at life. You can look at the bad things as in a setback or look at the bad things as a lesson. I'm the type of person that sees everything and everything that happened to me as a lesson. You may be thinking, how was those girls beneficial to you when it comes to your career? Look at the person who I was before I met them. Now look who I am today. Still living in the hotel only a few days later is when I decided to make my first YouTube video. I went from zero views straight to 100,000 that was a huge confidence boost for me. I finally felt like what I was doing was the right thing. For the first time in my life, it looked like people actually was interested in me. After that video, I said, hey, you know, he's saying, I'm gonna try comedy. I got my iPhone, I stick it to my bathroom window, I put my bed sheets behind me so it looked like a white background, and God making another video. But a week or two went by after I post that video, and that's when a certain someone hit me up. You remember that girl who left me for the nigga on the basketball court? Look how the world turns around. Hey, Christian, I saw your video. You're seriously funny, you know what I mean? All I had was questions, bro. I just wanted to know. Because all these years, I never really 
knew for sure. All I could go by is what I saw. And the only thing I saw was them hugging. That's when she answered me with, hey, I did not cheat on you. And I said, I didn't really do none of those things. And I said, hey, I don't really know she's lying. And to be honest, I don't really care. So months and months and months went by until we're to the point where we are right now. 56,000 subscribers and the best supporter someone could ever have. I wish I could end the story saying, hey, today, I am now a millionaire. Or I was now named the sexiest man in the world. But we all know that I ain't damn true. I'm still poor. I still live in my parents' house today. What I can say, though, I'm a way different person than I was back then. Right.